Hello, welcome to Have A Go, and I'm Alan. Going to get cracking on cleaning this up now. Before I do, I'm curious as to what this actually weighs. Four point four five kilograms. So just under four and a half kilograms this thing. Right, we'll start with the old wire brush. I think I'll try the belt sander first, then go to the um, band saw, then go back to the belt sander. That might work. Bit of quality time with the sander later. This and the um, band saw. This is what I have. A bit more time on the sander for the outside edges, I think. And after that, I'll get the detail sander to do to smooth out this inside part. Even with this cover off, I can't sand up it, up this part because it's too. Couldn't sand up this part because it's too tall. It hits the metal part there. And similarly, the throat on this isn't deep enough to get inside here. So it's going to be filing from here on out, I think. It did do a reasonably nice job of this inside curve here, I suppose. And also tidied up the bottom of this. But now, after I clean up, it will be time for the fire. It is now 4.11 kilograms. So I took off about 300 grams worth of stuff off it. This will be the front, looks reasonably okay. This is the back, which is a lot uglier, but it's the back so I don't have to care. Just occurred to me, I need to cut the um, little horizontal lines down here to separate the two air pads. Tell you what, I'll put some music on and I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, got them sanded. JB Weld was involved, it's an experiment. Because this won't be sliding very long, it'll only be sliding for the boring operation. So given the limited wear these wear pads are going to have, I figured it'd be a good place to experiment with how tough JB Weld epoxy is as bearings. So, gonna glue this up, get to scraping. And yeah, this was before I discovered just how quick metal can flash rust. Lucky for me, there is a good side. I was hoping to avoid using the lathe bed itself because then I'm gonna have to unclamp and reclamp the um, headstock. Right, 
This has reminded me of a write-up I read from someone else who made one of these. And that you'll wonder why precision machinery doesn't cost more than it does. Right now I kind of wish I knew someone with a mini mill or something. I could strap this down to and just blitz the sodding thing on that. Um, I should probably explain that. Something I was picked up on YouTube, if you shine a light through, put, you know, put the test there, shine a light at the crack and look from the other side. You'll find it a lot easier to spot any gaps. Right, the second I'm inclined to say, good enough for rock and roll. Alright, next order of business is to scrape this top surface in. Cast the bearing caps that will go on top of it, scrape those in so they mate with it. Then drill some bolts to bolt the caps on. These are the patterns for the for the caps. I've got the bottom of this to where I'm basically more or less happy with it. And I checked on the surface plates with the new calipers and the height here is about the same roughly as the height here so I'm golden. I just need to scrape in the top of the top of this so it's dead flat so it'll mate nicely with the bearing caps once I cast them. So that when the bearing caps which will also be have their bottom scraped on there it will be a perfect match and not rock like this. I thought I might show how I do this a bit better. Put on some non drying Prussian blue. Smear it all over the plate with the grater. Not all over, but enough that I can print the surface I want to check. Move this a bit. And well, I have got my work cut out for me. Right, I just tried the um, belt sander and this thing shakes too much I'm doing this because there's zero point to actually doing the scraping when there's this much of a difference okay that did not help at all this is plan Z because it's probably going to take me forever. Good part is that the weight of the casting is actually working for me for once. It's pushing it down into the sandpaper. The glass is... Well, it's not as flat as the surface plate, but it's still flatter than a normal thing. And I also don't mind if grit gets on, you know, grinds the surface of the glass a bit. Whereas I do care if that happens with the surface plate, which is why I've got the sandpaper on the glass and not the surface plate. I put some vivid marks on the casting. Then I'll know if the sand, if the sanding gets the whole surface down or just part of it. See from there we can tell this part was being sanded and half of this and along there in the corner there but the parts where the blue lines are I know that it hasn't sanded. However boring you think this is, it's a lot more boring than that. Right, I spent quite a bit of time with some 40 grit sandpaper on the flat glass getting this flat 
It's about to a level now where I'm reasonably happy with it. So I've got this stuff away. I need to put the way clamps on top of here. This one on this side, this one on this side. I've also pre-cut the jib strip. I need to scribe some lines to mark where to cut these. So I'm going to use the inaccurate calipers since I don't care if I damage the jaws on these. It's either two small G clamps or two big G clamps. I'm trying to get this center, this um, line here, along the center of these pads. Next time, I'm just going to bite the bullet and use Gonzo G clamps because these little F1 F clamps, I could feel them slipping. I drilled these nice and deep so that I wouldn't have to worry about clearing the bottom of the hole because they're lined holes. Zamax seems to break the chips itself when you tap them. With steel you have to back off the tap to make the chips break, but this Zamax is so brittle compared to steel that it seems to do it on its own. These little piles here, this is from one hole, this is from the other. These are all the little um, filings cut, cut by the tap when I was tapping those holes. And they were collecting at the bottom of those blind holes. No clamp needed. I'm going to have to get the shop back again to clean in the V grooves on this. I still have to cut shims to go between the clamps and the headstock. I also still have to drill um, for the jib adjustment screws, which will go onto this. Doesn't fit because the shims aren't there. But all in all, I think I've done enough for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.